Hi there, this is Amy. In this video, I'll give you a brief overview of the key features in Jazz Reporting Service, or JRS for short. Jazz Reporting Service is the reporting framework used by the Jazz based tools that allows you to build reports, share those reports, run those reports, export the reporting data that's in the reports, and also add report widgets to dashboards. The way this works is that each of the IBM applications that help you manage your end-to-end -end delivery lifecycle, Rational Team Concert, Rational Quality Manager, Rational Doors Next Generation, and even Doors and ClearQuest legacy products, deliver data to what JRS calls a data source automatically via tracked resource sets or TRS feeds and via data collection jobs that can be scheduled. There are two supported data sources the Lifecycle Query Engine, or LQE, and the Relational Data Warehouse. Once the data sources are populated, you can use the Report Builder to build, run, and manage your reports. These reports can be published for use on dashboards and exported into all kinds of formats. Are you ready to take a look? Great. Let's get started with Report Builder. This is the entry point to JRS. An easy-to-follow menu of options is available on the left. You can look at all the reports that are visible to you, build a new report, view the reports that you created or those that were shared with you, and if you're administrator, you can actually administer things like the data sources or the report, report uh, administrators, things like that. And you can also explore some learning activities to help you understand how to use Report Builder. In this short video, let's focus on how to build reports and then how to run them. Click on the Build option to begin building a new report. Along the top, Report Builder kind of walks you through the natural steps required to build a report, which involves first choosing the data and then involves formatting the results. You'll also need to name and share your report, and then of course you'll run it. To build a report, you first select a data source. Remember I explained that JRS supports both LQE and relational data sources? You can create current and historical reports using either data source format. The default data source is selected for you, but you can change that by clicking the little pencil icon just like that. The remaining steps to help you gather the data for your report involve limiting the scope to a subset of project areas, choosing an artifact as your starting point, creating a traceability tree from that starting point to gather more data by following relationships, and then setting conditions that limit the results. The kinds of artifacts you can choose are pretty broad. You can choose from the change in configuration work item artifacts, uh, build work item, and then you can look at history and status history. You can also choose artifacts that originate in rational quality manager or requirements management domains. Great. Okay, so if the next step is to format your results. This is where it gets fun. If you click the Format Results option, you'll see a table view that's pre-populated based on the data you chose. You can add more data, add calculations of data, and even add custom expressions. You can also add some other things that are really cool in the tabular output, like colors on cells in the tables or rows in tables, and you can group your results. You get the idea. If you click on the graph, you can create visual representations of your results that involve things like color, bars, or pie charts, and even combine lines and bars. So let's take a look at an existing report just to get an idea how that works. We'll click All Reports, and then we'll find one that is interesting. Let's look at the Feature Progress Report. When we click Edit, we can actually look at how this report was built. So if we click on Choose Data, we'll see that the report type is current data, rational data warehouse. We limited the scope to a couple of project areas, and then we chose an artifact as a starting point. And in this case, we chose a feature. And then we built the traceability tree. A feature has child stories and set some conditions for those artifacts, like when was the feature planned? What are the work item types? What are the uh, status groups? Those sorts of things. When we click continue, we'll see how the graph was created. 
and it's actually made up of some calculations, it also really uh, uh, gives you a good uh, idea of how to combine lines and bars in the graph. So like for block stories, that one is a dashed line, and if I were to change that to red, it would be really obvious. You would be able to see that pretty clearly. If we click on the table view, you'll be able to see the content of this graph from a tabular perspective and how we've grouped the results together. When I refresh here, what you'll see is a, um, a representation of the data that's in the table format and how the grouping works. You can also do some cool things like add colors. Uh, I talked about that earlier. Finally, if we click on the name and share, you'll see how the report was named, how uh, it was described. You can also see how we kind of group it in folders or categories, if you will, by adding some tags. And then we made it public so that everyone can use it and we set the, the default visualization to graph. So this is how you would create, create a pretty simple status report. Okay, that was a whirlwind tour into creating a report. Remember to go click learn to read more about this later. Now let's say you have a report and you wanna add it as a widget on a dashboard. Let's check that out. So we're gonna to go to a project area that I have created with a set of reports. You'll notice the reports by the graphics and colors, so it's really easy to spot them. If you have the proper permissions, you'll see the add widget option in the top right of the dashboard. I'll click on that to find a report to add. Let's look for that progress report we were just uh, viewing in the report builder. We have to select the right category first, so we'll set that to report builder. And then we'll go into the category where we had that report. And you can scroll through and see all the reports that are um, available to you. Here's the feature progress report. And we can take a look at the details, the description, and then click add widget. Now the report is on the dashboard. And there you have it. So. Sometimes the report is hard to see, but never fear. You can maximize the report right on the dashboard by clicking the Maximize button, and that will make it bigger so you can take a look at it and get all the details that you need. And you can also click on Open a New New Window. And here you'll get an even bigger picture of the report, and you also can take advantage of the Export option. That's it for this overview. I hope this has enticed you to go learn more. Thanks for watching.